Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Line CB. Welcome to the match review of our 2 1 win against Watford tonight on Boxing Day. Both goals coming from Eden Hazard. It's unfortunate that the guy wasn't able to get a hat trick today, but in today's match review, I'm going to be talking about Jorginho Kante. I'm going to be talking about Hazard himself. Sorry, plus other tactical observations from today's game. So stay tuned for that. If you like the video and if you like the content I produce, smash that like button help me get more than 500 likes for today's video and press the bell notification button as well to stay tuned to all things blue line cv anyway getting straight into things starting with the lineup and it was quite surprising to see that ruben wasn't part of the team but you know information came out later stating that the guy in fact was a bit injured so sorry was taken a precaution by not using him in today's game so he is fit for the next game against palace i think so that makes a lot of sense and uh you know, I should have calmed myself down from then. But you guys, it's been Christmas. I've been enjoying that turkey. I've been enjoying my whiskey as well. So, so you know how it goes. But anyway, moving on to the tactics of today's game. Now, I'm going to start with that so I can focus on other important talking points later on in this video. But with Watford, I have to say that their tactical approach to this game was identical to what Everton used against us. Now, they did use a 4-4-2, but off the ball, they did revert back to a 4-5-1 off the ball. And when I compare them to Everton, what I'm saying is, is that they both used a mid-block tactic and they both didn't apply pressure onto us. Now, of course, there were times, and of course, during the context of games where, you know, the opponents will be pressing us, but that wasn't Watford's main game plan today. Their game plan was to keep their shape, be very compact, and to force us wide with our possession. And at times, it did work a lot, but at times as well, it didn't work for them. But before I get into that, Watford were counter-attacking down the flanks, as teams normally do. It was quite interesting to see how they used Dini and Delefeu. Delefeu had that free roll in the final third, and you know he's a very good player. He's very dangerous as well, and I thought he was pretty decent in today's game. And of course, the benefit of using Delefeu in that free roll is the fact that, depending on if they're on the left or the right, with Delefeu having that freedom to go wherever the ball is, Watford always had an additional passing option due to Delefeu. And he was very key to them, helping them get a hold of the ball in our half. And of course, he was the guy dropping deeper into midfield to help out defensively as well. When Watford were counter-attacking, they do what most teams do and they were focusing their counter-attacks down the flanks and they were going for very quick direct balls through to our goal. And obviously that makes sense if you're using Troy Deeney up front. Another observation of what Watford were doing off the ball was another typical thing that teams do. And Delefeu and Troy Deeney were keeping close to Jorginho. Again, they weren't trying to press most times. What they were trying to do was force us out wide with our passes. And it was working at times. But anyway, moving straight on to us and... For the first 10 minutes of the game, we were in control of the ball. Now, it was kind of safe possession because we weren't creating many opportunities. And I felt that at times during the first half, Hazard was pretty isolated. Now, I felt like it was tactical instructions from Sari to tell Hazard to stay further up the pitch and to not drop deep as much. But I feel that as the game went on and because we were really struggling to create those opportunities, I think Hazard must have had some instructions made by Sari to play as normal game and I feel that when Hazard was dropping deeper, linking up the play, moving into those spaces, dragging out, you know, Watford's shape and their defenders, that's when we were able to create more opportunities and that's how Pedro and William were able to collect the ball in very dangerous positions in the pitch and we were constantly able to find spaces between the lines against Watford and of course, that is the beauty of using a false nine system as what you're trying to do is force the opposition team to really tell a player to deal with the false nine strike. And of course, when you do that, that's going to create spaces in behind. And we were constantly able to create opportunities. And in a way, it was quite unfortunate that we weren't able to score more than two goals in today's game. But again, you know, I feel like if Sari is going to use Hazard, as I'm always stating, you have to use this guy as a false nine. Don't waste him as a forward. You know, Hazard needs to touch the ball. When he gets on the ball, he makes things happen. He forces the opposition team to have to deal with him. And I don't think that Sari can really get him to play as a poacher. Now, the main benefit of using Hazard as a false nine was that it encourages more people to get inside the box. And, you know, at times, you know, it's pretty frustrating. And maybe it's because the team haven't really played too many games using a strikerless front three. But 
There are still times where we're not getting enough men in the opposition box. I look at Man City, they constantly get men in the box. We're not doing that enough. And I feel like this is why we don't score as many opportunities. But again, there are quite a few positives from today's game. Now, one thing that was really effective today was our build-up play from the back. Now, of course, there were a few times in the second half when Watford were trying to get back in the game and apply more pressure where they did win the ball in our half. And of course, some of our players did make those individual mistakes, but I think throughout the entire context of the game today, I feel like our build-up from the back is fantastic. I mean, the amount of times we turn mistakes into counter-attacking opportunities, and it's so frustrating that we're not scoring from these chances because throughout the season, we've done this so many times, but we don't have that finishing touch in the final third. And I feel like if we had that person that was finishing the moves, people would remember most of these chances being created. And I don't think that people will be questioning whether sorry ball is working or not. But anyway, just before the first half ended, we did get the first goal. That did come from Eden Hazard. Very good finish, very good link-up play. And again, I feel like we were deserving of that goal because Watford were constantly losing possession of the ball in their own half. And I feel with Cover, he was very quietly impressive again today. Really helped us with our pressing. Played the pass into Hazard, who got onto it. And of course, when Hazard skips past a goalkeeper, 10 times out of 10, it's going in the back of the net. Now, during this time, all of us were thinking, okay, we're going into the second half of the 1-0 leads, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Now, again, I feel that this mistake for the equaliser from Watford came from Rudiger, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I feel like Rudiger should have got his body balance and his positioning on point beforehand because it was a very easy opportunity to deal with that header. It was very preventable because he made a mistake and I think he slightly slipped. That gave away the corner. And to be honest, when it came to the equaliser, I don't think that we could have defended against that. It was a world-class goal. I think if we had scored a goal like that, I would be praising us to the skies. It was a great goal, a great volley finish from Pereira. And it was very unfortunate that, you know, we allowed Watford back into the game. But you guys, in the comments section below, give me your thoughts and opinions. Do you feel like Rudiger was at fault or do you think that I was being a bit too critical? And I made this point exactly in the last five talking points video I released. And that's the fact that I feel that Rudiger is very poor when it comes to dealing with anything airily. He's just not very good. I mean, how many times did Dini win the ball from him? How many times has Rudiger stuck behind? He doesn't get in front of the marker and it's kind of weird. I think that Rudiger is like the definition of a modern day defender. Fantastic technical ability, but when it comes to the defensive side, you know, his one-on-one -on -one defending and his abilities in the air, I don't think it's amazing. But I think as an overall package, he's a fantastic player and, you know, the game's changed now, you know, it's become much more modern. So defenders need to be technical at the back. But anyway, of course, moving into the second half. And before that, of course, hudson Adoy did come on. It was great to see. I kind of feel personally that he was kind of bottlenecked in that sense. Now, I do understand why Sari used him down that right-hand side because I'm guessing that he's thinking with William down the left. He's going to help defend with Alonso much better compared to hudson Adoy. And Sari has been a bit, I wouldn't say critical, but he's been vocal in regards to hudson Adoy needing to get better off the ball. But I feel like if he is going to get better... He has to play. And it was nice to see that Sari trusted hudson Adoy to actually bring him on because I think we were all assuming that Giroud might come on. But I think Sari's under the impression that, you know what, I don't have forwards anymore. I'm sticking with the strikerless front three. And in my opinion, I think it's the right direction to go down. But with hudson Adoy, I think his performance again was quite quiet. Um, As I was saying, I feel like he was kind of bottlenecked because he couldn't really cut inside as much. And I feel that's his natural game. Um, I think down that right-hand side, again, this is why I want some of the left foot for next season because it makes a massive difference. We've seen with Ruben, hudson Adoy, and Millian that, yes, you're going to get some ability down that side, but it's never going to be consistent. Now, I have to apologise to Sari. You know, I, I put out a very controversial tweet when Sari subbed off hudson Adoy, and I was assuming that he was thinking, you know what? I need to see out this win. Let me bring on Emerson. But actually, in fact, it was down to a slight knock that hudson Adoy had. So it was a precaution. So again, apologies to Sari. But I have to say in the second half, we were quite decent. Um, Again, Hazard getting the second goal with that penalty. And this is why I love seeing this guy playing as a natural false nine because it was the fact that he dropped deeper and he literally commanded the attention of three Watford players. He sucked them in. 
Zami then made the run in behind, and it was terrible goalkeeping by Foster. And you know that Hazard in this mood is definitely going to get the second goal. And again, it was quite frustrating because I feel like we had the opportunity to score more goals. Again, our lack of a finishing touch is making these games much more difficult for us. I think if we had that guy up front, it would make the biggest difference for us. But anyway, I want to talk about two more players before I leave. Now, I'm going to talk about Jorginho. I feel like he was one of the best players today. Some of his passing in particular, some of his forward passes. And I feel like Jorginho was like a David Luiz. He constantly plays a lot of very good vertical passes. But because we don't finish any of these opportunities we create, these moments get forgotten constantly. Jorginho was some very great defensive work off the ball. I think he was very solid. He was immense in helping us play out to beat the press and start the attacks. The guy is the living embodiment of what Sari Ball is. And for everyone that still doesn't understand what Sari Ball is, it's very simple. All you've got to think is, we like to have opponents come onto us so we can beat the press, play through them. And when you play through them, you can create those counter-attacking chances in a sense. And that's effectively what Sari Ball is about. And without Jorginho, we couldn't do this as effectively as we do. I mean, some of his cute lob passes he made to Kovacic and Hazard, you know, they started the counter-attacks and it's like only Jorginho would play a pass like that to start a move and the guy is just so intelligent and so great technically. It was a very good performance from him. When it comes to Kante, I feel like he worked very hard, but the end products, I feel like he had quite a lot of freedom in the final third and I didn't see enough. Now, I know that he had the chance at the end. Maybe I'm being a bit too critical thinking that he should have done better from there. But I don't know, I feel like he should have done much better. I don't know, can say again, he's going to be a work in progress. I think when it comes to next season, he's going to be a more complete player. But I'm, I think naturally at times will be quite frustrating. And again, I feel like if Ruben was playing with his ability to break the lines and push forward, maybe we would have made this game a bit easier for us. But still, it's good we got the win. It's great after Man City lost again. Thank you, Leicester City, for that. But you guys, that's going to bring an end to today's match review. Give me your thoughts and opinions below. Who stood out for you? Who was the man of the match? What moments really disappointed you? Let me know. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. Signing out.